know how some of my friends see me. Uh, when you first met me, some of you could have said that uh, I look like somebody who studies history or philosophy. Some of you say that I look like a philosophy teacher. I mean, come on. I'm not that bad. You hear me talk to my parents about my relationships and future plans. You might think, oh, his family is like the perfect family that I wish I had. Well, <laughs> take it if you like, but I mean, I'm not like Harry Potter who lives under the stairs. The standard of living is probably above average, actually. Well, when I was little, my friends never came to my house, and I actually you know, never been to theirs. Well, just because I live a little bit further away from everybody else. But you know, I was kind of afraid to ask my parents to do anything like this, like drive me around, because they always give me the feeling that what they are doing in their life are like a thousand times more important than what my life is or what I needs are. I mean, sometimes even what they say or do is wrong, but you have to listen and obey because, well, they're parents and they are the authorities. Verbal violence was mostly、um, experienced when my grandparents were with us. I remember in fifth grade,、um, one of the light bulbs in the bathroom was busted. I mean, as a kid, I didn't know what was going on, so I was fidgeting with the switch for a bit. I was like turning it on and off, and、uh, I just heard my grandma from the back of my head just yelling, "Like, what's wrong with you?" I got scared, but. I didn't think much of it when I heard it because my parents they don't really yell at me like that. I felt a little bit overwhelmed and didn't know what to do. I just went back to my own room. I mean, I'm glad that my parents never did anything or say anything like that. But it also makes me kind of wonder, like, what did they experience at the, at, in their childhood? Heard of this book by Shannon Thomas called Healing from Hidden Abuse? Before I became an adult, I was always confused about my circumstances. I look like I'm not missing anything, but why do I still live a very depressed and stressful life? They keep telling me, "Oh, it's your character flaw." So before I learned about the term emotional abuse, or maybe it's called soft violence. English. I'm not sure. Before that, I had very low self-esteem, and I just kept introspecting. So after reading this book, I learned about the hidden abuse and got the chance to take a look at what I went through. Verbal violence and the manipulation of my behavior came when I was eight. That was when my mom married my stepdad. I want to be objective when it comes to talking about him. He's not too bad. But I have to say that he somewhat lacks the ability to empathize and is somewhat a social Darwinist. But whether it is purposeful or not, this malice almost ruined my life. I grew up with my grandparents of my mom's side, and they loved me. Then I had to leave them to go to school, and I started living with my mom. From elementary school to university to my twenties, I only contacted them through phone calls and mail, and that's how I felt their love. Once my grandpa sent me a glass mug; it was so precious to me, but I still broke it afterwards. But I saved one piece of the broken glass and hid it in my backpack. I was on the way to school in my stepdad's car, and it slipped out, and my leg was right next to it. It was like a knife being stabbed onto my leg, 'cause it was more painful than that now when I think of it. But I was afraid to make a sound or cry. I was around ten, and I knew that if I tried to tell him why I am sad, it would only allow him to shame me, and then I will have to cry. So I didn't make any sound. When I got to school and to the nurse. Half of my sock was red, and of course that left a scar. 